Good morning, everyone. We welcome you from near and far to the Church of the Immaculate Conception in Glenville, New York. Today is Monday, October 5th, and we celebrate the blessed Francis Xavier Silos' feast day today. Our presider this morning is Father Leo Markert, and we welcome him and thank him for all he does for us. But before we begin, as always, we remember in our prayers our fellow parishioners who have died on this date. Elvira Ippoliti, 1991. Kenneth Piccati, 1993. Mary M. Vargo, 2000. And Magdalene M. Crystal, 2011. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. And may their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Will you come and follow me if I but fall? Our Mass today intention is for Dolly Davenport and for a very special intention. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. <coughs> As we gather on this feast, a blessed Francis Javier Silos, may we call to mind our sins and ask God for forgiveness. Lord, for those times that we fail to be missionaries in our own homes, Lord have mercy. For the times that we fail to be missionaries in our places of work and recreation, Christ have mercy. For the times that we fail to be missionaries of Christ to all whom we meet each day, Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us now pray. O oh God, who made your priest Blessed Francis Javier Silos, outstanding in love, that he might proclaim the mysteries of redemption and comfort those in affliction. Grant by his intercession that we may work zealously for your glory and for the salvation of all mankind. We all pray this 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, I am amazed that you are so quickly forsaking the one who called you by the, gra by the grace of Christ for a different gospel, not that there is another. But there are some who are disturbing you and wish to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, or an angel from heaven, should preach to you a gospel other than the one that we preach to you, let that one be accursed. As we have said before, and now I say again, if anyone preaches to you a gospel other than the one that you received, let that one be accursed. Am I now currying favor with human beings or God? Or am I seeking to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a slave to Christ. Now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel preached by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human being, nor was I taught it, but it came through a revelation of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. The Lord, the Lord will remember his covenant forever. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart in the company and assembly of the just. Great are the works of the Lord, exquisite in all their delights. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. forever. The works of his hands are faithful and just. Sure are all his precepts, reliable forever and ever, wrought in truth and equity. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. forever. He has sent deliverance to his people. He has ratified his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. His praise endures forever. The Lord will remember his covenant forever. forever. Gospel according to St. Luke. There was a scholar of the law who stood up to test Jesus and said, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? He said in reply, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, 
with all your being, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. He replied to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But because he wished to justify himself, he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man fell victim to robbers as he went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. They stripped him and beat him and went off leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down that road, but when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. Likewise, a Levite came to the place, and when he saw him, he passed by on the opposite side. But a Samaritan traveler who came upon him was moved with compassion at the sight. He approached the victim, poured oil and wine over his wounds and bandaged them. Then he lifted him up on his own animal, took him to an inn and cared for him. The next day, he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper with the instruction, take care of him. If you spend more than what I have given you, I shall repay you on my way back. Which of these three, in your opinion, was neighbor to the robber's victim? And he answered, the one who treated him with mercy. And Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. What a powerful story we have from Jesus today as a teacher, as one who tells people as it is and what we should do for one another. Very familiarly, we're very cognizant of the story of the Good Samaritan. We still use that phrase today, don't we? When people stop for those who are hurting to give them aid. And when this teacher of the law questioned Christ, how do I get eternal life? And Jesus said, what does the law say? And he said, love God, love your neighbor as yourself. But then he wanted to push the issue a little more and said, who? Who is my neighbor? Is it the person next door where I live? Is it someone I don't even know? Is it people I work with? Who is my neighbor? And Christ went on to give him this powerful story that this man going from Jerusalem to Jericho was beaten up by robbers, left half dead. And what happened? A Jewish priest passed by on the opposite side, ignoring him. A Levite did the same thing. And finally, in Jesus' story, this is the powerful part, a Samaritan. A Samaritans and Jews don't get along. In fact, they hate each other. And Christ used the example of a Samaritan traveler coming to his rescue. That would be today like Jewish people talking to each other, as happened then. And then in the story, the president of the PLO from Palestine being the person who showed compassion. And he took care of him, took him to an inn, paid for his care, and said, I'll pay more on my way home if it be needed. And then that question, who, in your opinion, Jesus said, was neighbor to that man beaten up? And of course, he said, the one who showed mercy. 
Christ say, go and do likewise. You and I are called to be the Good Samaritans of today. Here in Glenville, wherever you live, wherever you go, around the world, and every person whom you meet is your neighbor. And that's the whole point of that story. We are not to love only those who love us back. That's easy to do. But it's difficult to love those who hurt us, to love those who have a whole different way of life than we do, think differently, dress differently, and worship God differently, perhaps, or not at all. So you and I, ask God today to help you to be the Good Samaritan, neighbor to each and every person whom you meet. The man whom we honor today, he's blessed. He's on his way to canonization as a saint, but I'm sure he's already there. He came from Germany, was assigned to the Philadelphia area, and traveled all around on horseback, bringing the message of Christ in English and in German. So we honor him today. He's a good Samaritan. He came to this country to say to us, I love God and I love you. A PS to this beautiful story. Five years ago, I was teaching religion at Notre Dame Bishop Gibbons School to the sixth graders. And you know what we did? We acted out this story today, the Good Samaritan. And I asked the volunteer who would be the person beat up and this young 12-year-old kid said, I'll do it. So he lay on the floor of the classroom. The kids made believe they were beating him up and then taking him to the other side of the classroom to the inn for to be healed. And at the end of acting it all out, and they did it so beautifully, I said to the boy, who is now a sophomore at school, I said, in real life, if you had been beaten up like that, would you have forgiven the people who hurt you? And beautifully, he said, yes, I would. He did not only walk the walk, talk the talk, he heard what Christ was saying. And he said, yes, I would forgive the people who hurt me. What a beautiful story. The kid is now 16. I pray for him each day that he will continue to be that person who forgives those who hurt us. May you and I learn from the young people in our lives that we too, as Christ did, grow in age and wisdom and grace. God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Let us now pray. Lord God, we have heard the holy words of scripture today, and we will try, with God's help, to put them into practice. For all those who are searching for meaning in their lives, meaning in the midst of hurt and pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are hurt in any way, for all those who are addicted, for all those who are incarcerated, for all those who are unloved, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, sisterhood, and brotherhood, we pray to the Lord. For all of you and your special needs, for all our sick and dying, and for all the souls in purgatory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, for these many said and unsaid petitions that we hold within our hearts, we come before you this morning. We know that you will hear our prayers and answer them according to your holy will. And this we pray through Christ our Lord, our brother, and our best friend. Amen.
blessed be God. Through the end of seasons of all time, you have always been. Like a mystery of this water and the water, you will always be. Who humbled himself to share in our unity. Who humbled himself to share in our unity. Sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sins. My brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Good of all His Holy Church. Look upon the sacrificial gifts that we offer, Almighty God, on this feast day of blessed. Francis Javier Celos, and grant that we, who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion, may imitate what we do now. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty, and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on this feast of blessed Francis Javier Celos, you bid your church to rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, it entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Bishop, Edward, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially Dolly Davenport, and of very special intention. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on all of us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her husband, Saint Joseph, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Francis Javier Sellos, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory, glory are yours now and, and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Please may we share that peace with one another. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe through eternal life. Please join me in the prayer of spiritual communion. I wish my Lord to receive you with the purity humility and devotion with which your most holy mother received you with the spirit and fervor of the saints.
By the power of this mystery, O Lord, confirm your servants in our true faith, that they may everywhere profess in word and deed the faith for which blessed Francis Javier Sellos never ceased to labor and for which he spent his whole life. All this we ask through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, loving and serving one another as good Samaritans. Thanks be to God. Let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia. Shout with gladness, dance for joy. Oh, come before the Lord. And play for God on glad tambourines and let your trumpet. Sing 